A cyber attack on JBS, a major meat processor here in the U.S. and also abroad, forcing many of these production plants to shut down. Of course, this has very broad implications, not only for the price of meat, but of course, then what caused this cyber, who is behind this cyber attack. We want to bring in Dan Halley for a little bit more on this. And I guess, Dan, let's just start big picture first. Talk to us just about the implications of this cyber attack and what this could mean for meat prices here down the road. Yeah, this is coming after, you know, the the meat processing uh, or uh, meat production facilities around the world are really recovering from COVID still. Uh, there are uh, absentees of, of uh, employees in the U.S. still. Uh, this company happens to be behind uh, roughly a quarter of the U.S. beef capacity. Uh, and there are several plants in the U.S. that are being idled, as well as in Canada and Australia, uh, as a result of this hack. What's interesting, though, is uh, JBA has not released anything. Uh, sorry, JBS has not released anything as far as what is behind the attack, who the people are, or even what kind of attack it was. It just said it was a, a cyber incident, uh, really nothing beyond that. We don't know if it was ransomware, uh, if it was some other kind of attack. Uh, JBS is a, a Brazilian-based company. They say uh, that their facilities in Brazil uh, are still managing to uh, continue to operate without issues. So uh, you would expect to hear something uh, along the lines of what the attack was, but the, the fact that we're not hearing that yet is a little bit uh, kind of, uh, I guess, you know, suspect to a degree. Dan, um, does this add fuel to the fire for people who say the government needs to regulate crypto? Because although we don't know, one could suspect that if this is a ransomware kind of a hack, that they're going to request to be paid in a uh, non-traceable, at least they say non-traceable, cryptocurrency. I think it means more to uh, the government's ability to regulate cybersecurity to a degree, right? We have so many different uh, pieces of critical infrastructure uh, or companies that are critical to the continued operation of, of the U.S. economy uh, that frankly don't have the kind of cybersecurity capabilities that they should. Uh, and that's why we see issues like this crop up, the Colonial Pipeline uh, taking the ransomware attack that it had, uh, hospitals throughout the pandemic hit with ransomware attacks. Uh, we need to see some kind of uh, almost requirement uh, for cybersecurity for the public and private sector uh, just because of the kind of damage that this can do. And it's not just, you know, plants shutting down. Uh, it's the ability for uh, nation state actors, if they wanted to, to cause severe damage uh, to the infrastructure. I'm talking about uh, there are incidences reported in the past uh, of hackers being able to destroy pipelines by causing explosions, uh, melting down steel mills. Uh, we know, obviously, there was the Stucknex attack uh, on the Iran, uh, Iranian nuclear centrifuge uh, that was uh, widely reported to be by the U.S. and Israel uh, that caused uh, problems there and breaking the centrifuges there for those nuclear plants. So it's not just, you know, people stealing money. Uh, it really is physical damage that can be done here. Uh, and I just go back to the hospitals again during the pandemic uh, when they were being hit with ransomware. You know, there were points where cancer patients couldn't receive uh, their treatments because one of the companies that provides the software for that had suffered a ransomware attack. So it really is a, a real world issue that needs to be addressed. Uh, and yes, uh, crypto could be part of that, but I think a better way to look at it uh, is a larger kind of uh, wholesale look at cybersecurity from the government level down.